Việt Nam. Ok, these are the picture of my clinic, of our system. Ok, we will start the subject to, uh, today. Uh, my subject I want to show you today is the power of 3D simulation in diagnostic and orthodontic treatment. <coughs> First, uh, I know the famous sentence of Dr. Ronan Roth, we spend too much time for treating and not enough time for diagnostic. So my uh, presentation today is uh, we will introduce about uh, how to reduce the time and how to have the best dian uh, diagnostic for our orthodontic treatment plan. First, we talk about the making a treatment plan. <clears throat> uh, for making a treatment plan, it did not change so much from the beginning. The first part, we have to collect the records on the record of the patient. First, intra extra oral picture. We can do it easily with uh, a lot of software. We can do it also with web shape. Collect the X-ray. Manolamic cephalometric, collect story model, then we're making a treatment plan. Okay, after the classic way for making a treatment plan, is we have to do the shop issue, my face analysis, then do cephalometric analysis. This one we do with web shape, and after a story model analysis for measure the bonton discrepancy or measure the mesodistal size of the tooth. Then for complicated case, we can do manual setup or we, we call manual simulation. I want to talk about the history of manual setup. Uh, in 1953, Dr. Kessling uh, introduced about the 3D manual setup for complicated case for how to see the movement of the teeth and we can see the movement make the treatment plan for unusual uh, situation. Uh, on the internet we can uh, look for the paper or a lot of article or introduce a 3D manual setup and how to do it. We can do it uh, for a long time. So in 1956, on an uh, orthodontic journal, Dr. Kessling introduced how the, he can do a 3D manual setup. Then this is the way we are doing now. It's really the same with uh, Dr. Kessling uh, after around 60 uh, years. So the progress of the, the process of the way doing manual setup did not change so much. Of course, manual setup had a lot of uh, advantage, but uh, it had a disadvantage also. For manual setup, we had to take time in the lab, so it will be very expensive for us. Uh, if evaluate the movement is uh, not easy. And if we have more than treatment plan, it complicated for doing, or we have to do the two or three individual setup. And the most important thing is if we do the stripping on the model, we cannot redo it. We have to take impression. And if we want to uh, discuss with the another dentist or consulting with the patient, we have to have the physical model, uh, the beginning and the final setup. And now, today we have 3D, so it will be easy for us. We have scanner, we have intra extra oral scanner, like reshape, arterial, <coughs> and a lot of brand of 3D software, Invisalign, clean check, uh, or reshape, or shape, <coughs> and 3D printer, 3D resin printer, or FDM printer. And I had on in uh, my practice, 
uh, while using we are using the 3D in orthodontic for record taking for Invisalign fully customized appliance or in-house aligner but in Vietnam uh, for I see, uh, when I see I just see 90% they are using the 3D for record taking and for Invisalign they are doing in-house aligner but not a lot <coughs> so we start the main subject today, 3D digital simulation in orthodontics. How it can be useful and uh, uh, how we can do it for orthodontic case. First, I want to tell about the advantage of 3D digital simulation compared with 3D manual setup. Uh, for segmentation, we can do it less time than the uh, manual setup. It's easy. Moving the tip or chain anything has several options. is faster and easier. We can evaluate the quantity and quality of the movement. And if we want to discuss in uh, uh, implant or prosthodontic case, we can send to uh, the den another dentist easy and consulting with the patient. But for the disadvantage, we had to use the 3D object on a 2D display. It's not good. We can also can uh, we can also print the model. <clears throat> but I think it's uh, we don't need it. And the occlusal chain are harder to estimate. In my practice, we are using 3D digital simulation for first importance. In uh, the, my uh, my presentation is focused on diagnostic and lingual case or aligner case. Indication for diagnostic: first, normal case, unusual situation. For communication with the patient, we have several uh, several options. We have to discuss and choose the treatment plan with the patient. We explain about uh, advantage and disadvantage of uh, uh, the treatment plan. Communication with other dentists, especially in pluridisciplinary disciplinary case. And the diagnostics for aligner lingual treatment. We will discuss about all of uh, these things after. First, <clears throat> Could, uh, could I ask you one question? Why we had to do diagnostic simulation on normal case? Could you write on the chat, chat room why we had to do diagnostic simulation on normal case? You can write anything you uh, want or you are thinking because I know you are thinking uh, why, why we had to do the simulation on normal case it's easy it uh, we can decide the um, treatment plan very easy okay i'm waiting okay so i will explain uh, normal case in uh, vietnam or asia are not really easy we had 70% of adult patient and uh, extraction case. We see missing the molar every day, <laughs> a lot of crowding. So because we had the adult patient on most the extraction case, so treatment time can be very long, take time around uh, two to three years. Uh, so we had to do everything for reduce our um, treatment time. Every day case, we can see the case, normal case with the uh, last three uh, space on the upper and lower, missing the teeth on the upper and lower, mandibular lateral discrepancy, and frequent case like uh, last case, last three uh, anterior cross by and posterior cross by. Uh, a little crowding on upper and lower. So uh, these cases are not uh, orthognathic surgery case in Vietnam. 
And classic day, we saw it uh, every day, a lot of crowding. So for our uh, experience, okay, Dr. Pham Yung, a uh, formal presentation in truth movement. Yes. I, wa I will talk about uh, my experience. When I did the setup on the normal case, I changed the treatment plan uh, around half of my, my case. <clears throat> uh, despite of I only need around 10 to 15 minutes for one setup, one option, but I can say several appointments, a lot of material and time of the patient on the chair. Even if I did not change the treatment plan, uh, I will be more confident about uh, my treatment plan and uh, during the treatment. The patient will trust us more. <laughs> and we had to ask instruction or non instruction on this case. Why we had 70% of uh, adult patients, so uh, some cases are uh, borderline. If we do non instruction it will be faster and easier. Uh, but after, if I uh, change to instruction because we cannot do with non instruction you have to take for longer time and the patient will not be happy. Uh, you say uh, to them, we don't need to extract anything, but after we, you change to extract, of course, cannot help me. So we, if we do it, uh, we decide to extraction treatment, we have to tell with the patient and we uh, prepare for the long time of the treatment, take two or three years. Now we go to the clinical case. With clinical case and the simulation, I can explain uh, uh, easily and more clearly about uh, why we had to do the, the setup on normal case and uh, another situation. First case, <clears throat> uh, we had anterior cross by on most F to F on the center incisor, moderate crowding. Uh, upper and lower. And when we see the X-ray, I want to keep the position of the upper incisor, or just apply a little, and show the anterior cross by with the uh, retrocline the lower incisor for improve the patient profile. Okay. Uh, we see the simulation. <clears throat> First, I want to do uh, non extraction uh, treatment with this patient. <clears throat> okay, for easy to see my simulation, I want to tell you about my uh, about the reference. Uh, white part is for the beginning of the treatment, and blue part is the final result. And I cut the satellite view of. Uh, the 3D model, we can see the movement as we want uh, like the cephalometric. Uh, in this case, we can see we keep the position of the upper incisor and we retrocline only lower incisor. Okay, I, I broke line a little on this case and I did non retraction treatment. What we have, I will, we will see. Okay, we do non retraction treatment. When we see on the simulation, we distalize number 37. This number 37, we distalize is around six to seven millimeter to zone the um, crowding and retract, uh, retract the lower incisor a little and uh, zone the uh, midnight uh, deviation. After we can see from a lot of the literature, <clears throat> it will be very risky for distalization of six millimeter to seven millimeter because we know the limitation of the, the mandibular, the mandible. So we cannot distalize a lot like this one. Sometimes, sometimes we can do. <clears throat> 
but uh, almost we can only uh, do uh, distalize uh, region of the mo lower molar around three to four millimeter. So I don't want to have the risky of my uh, treatment. I change to extraction simulation. <coughs> I change to extraction. So first, <coughs> I do extraction. But the first one, I just think I only need to do uh, extraction on the lower. I uh, extract only three, four. For this one, you can see we can do uh, we can do it only with the lower because for the upper we can distill like just a little like two or three millimeter. We can do with mini straw. It's easy. But the trouble is if we only extract the uh, number four on the lower, the number seven on the upper will not be in occlusion. So we keep one premolar on the upper, but we lose one the molar on the upper and we don't have the molar in the occlusion. <clears throat> so now I change to, uh, Extraction on the upper also, and I extract uh, two five on the upper and three four on the um, uh, lower. Yeah, we can see. The, this is for the un anchorage. For sector four, we can uh, we have to use the ministro, of course. But uh, on uh, Sector three, we might, uh, we might need the mid true because we may still like the molar only one to uh, one point five millimeter. Okay, after the first case, I think uh, you uh, you know why we had to do the simulation and how it can be useful. I will discuss with you uh, more case in normal case and explain more about the useful of the 3D simulation. Second case, we have moderate crowding uh, on the upper and the lower. For the profile, the patient is okay. And uh, with the profile and the position of the lower and upper incisor is on most good. So I just want to do, uh, we want to retract uh, one to two millimeter of the incisor. So I did the extraction simulation for premolar extraction. Then what we have, we see for the upper is okay. For the lower, okay, we will see uh, this one. For the lower, we can see the number 36. We burn around 95% of the extraction space. We burn 95%. We only need around 0 0.5 millimeter. So only need 0 0.5 millimeter why we need extraction on this side. Okay, then I change to non-extraction on the lower left. For the upper, it's really the same. So for the lower left, we don't need to extraction, but we have to distalize around 0 0.5 millimeter. So I need the mini straw here for this uh, for this sector. We don't need the mini straw. Sorry, if uh, when I uh, explain or uh, uh, you had a question, you can uh, tap on the chat box or you can uh, tell me uh, uh, a bit more slowly. Thank you. Then we can see the anchorage on the upper is not the same for both sides. For this one, we have normal anchorage, okay? But for this one, we may still align around one to one point one to two millimeter and we don't have number seven because the patient only 12 years old. So we need the mini screw here. Then the third case, we had the space on the upper, impacted premolar on the lower, uh, proclination open by, 
And when I see the X-ray, I think this is an extraction case. I want to retrocline the upper a, a lot and the lower a little. The upper around six millimeter and the lower around two, one to two millimeter. Then, and I had to show the midnight deviation. Then I do the extraction simulation. For me, when I see the case, I think, okay, this one is a uh, extraction case with four premolar extraction. For the lower, we had to use mini screw for um, uh, absolute anchorage. And for the upper, you can see, we uh, retract around 6.5 millimeter on the upper. But we uh, only need the uh, normal uh, anchorage here. We may still like the uh, number five around uh, four millimeter. So I think, uh, okay, if we do, uh, if we uh, only need uh, four millimeter on the upper, we can do uh, distalization. We don't need the uh, instruction on the upper. I change to non instruction on the upper. We see the simulation. For the upper and sagittal cut, it's the same thing. For the upper simulation, we have to distalize the upper seven, 5.5 millimeter. The setup shows us we have to distalize the number seven, 5.5 millimeter. And the most important thing is the occlusion. The occlusion both sides. The number seven, upper seven is not in the occlusion. So like the first case, we keep two primula. We don't want to extract two primula. We have to use ministro because distalization on the upper, we have to use ministro. Very difficult for doing distalize five millimeter and we lost two molar. Okay, the basin was not happy at all. Signal the molar is very important. So we choose the first option. If we uh, sometimes uh, in my clinic and for me also, uh, I had some situation like this. I want to keep the premolar for the patient and at the, at the end of the treatment, I had the number seven like this one. And after I had some uh, discussion with the patient uh, an implant or uh, extract the premola and burn 100% uh, anchorage. Oh, oh, for me, uh, it luckily the patient is okay. <laughs> he did not care about number seven. Okay, after normal case, <clears throat> we can see clearly and the benefit of the 3D simulation in normal case. So for unusual uh, situation, of course, we need to do simulation. When we consider about uh, extraction the incisor, extraction the cannon, the patient only had three lower incisor, three upper incisor, lost one incisor by an accident or anything not normal. We have to do the 3D simulation. <coughs> for how the teeth fit, for how the teeth move, and my mechanic, how we can do it. <coughs> the first case, the patient had crowding on the upper, open by, and only three lower incisor. So for this patient, I had two options when I see the patient. And see it right, <coughs> uh, she had protrusion, uh, jaw protrusion, upper and lower. So I want to uh, retroline uh, the in upper and lower incisor around uh, two to three millimeter. Cannot uh, retroline a lot. Uh, first option I choose is three premolar simulation. Two premolar on the upper and one premolar on the lower right. We see the simulation. The, for the upper, it's okay. Uh, no trouble here. For the sagittal side, okay also. We retract a little. But for the lower, we have to uh, do uh, asymmetric 
uh, mechanic for this one. We had to train the cannon to the incisor and we had to do stripping. Uh, asymmetric mechanic uh, is not uh, easy. So uh, we have to note it and very careful about it. And second option, uh, it's just one lower incisor. And both cannon will be the incisor. For the upper and the side, side the same thing. For the lower, we can see this is the cannon. This is the cannon, the beginning cannon. So after the treatment, we had to do stripping a lot on the incisor and the cannon for so the mountain disturbance. So the amount, the amount of the stripping could be a potential issue. So I did not choose this option. And with this option, when we extract uh, one incisor, we can have the black triangle between the lower incisor. So me and the, we choose uh, first option. <coughs> then the second case, the case we uh, extract one lower incisor, the big routing on the lower, good club occlusion, the minimal uh, routing on the upper. Okay, so the basin want to do a liner. With a liner, it's very easy. So I want to do the setup uh, for seeing uh, well, what, uh, which movement we will have. Okay, perfect. We had a minimum movement on the upper and the lower. <laughs> We can see it's easy with a liner, so we can do it fast. Uh, only less than six months. The treatment time only less than six months. Okay, after three months, we had um, the progress picture. The patient is happy. The third case, this is a very good case for showing uh, how the simulation useful. When I saw my son, I really want to extract to the lower incisor. <coughs> why? Why? Because uh, it, we can do uh, the treatment time very fast. We can do the treatment very fast. But I cannot do it if I uh, don't know clearly about uh, what I have to do. The patient is okay with her profile. I want to keep or just uh, retroply a little on the upper and the lower. <coughs> Uh, she missing one, the molar. <coughs> so first I do the option with the uh, extraction one, the premolar on the upper and uh, extract two lower incisor, opening space for an implant. This one, uh, this, uh, the picture show how we can open the space for an implant and the occlusion is good. Okay, we can see the movement is not uh, a lot. So the treatment time is fast, uh, will be fast. Then I show her the second option on show. The second option is I only extract uh, one lower incisor on the right and on the left, I align the incisor and blow the space, uh, molar space. But we can see the molar space is quite big. So if uh, I had to retract and apply the molar around uh, six millimeter, um, for this one, the treatment time can be long, around uh, take around uh, two to three years. <coughs> And uh, it can be a uh, potential issue of the baryon donto. <clears throat> so then I discussed with the patient. Uh, the patient is around uh, 40 years old and she the woman. So she just want to improve her aesthetic as soon as possible. <clears throat> she want to do the treatment time very, uh, the treatment very fast. So I discussed with her and we chose the first option. She is okay with an implant, no trouble. And we extract two lower incisor with uh, a little stripping. 
<coughs> on the lower. <coughs> okay, so the third part is for communication with the patient. Uh, the first and second part, we uh, discuss about the uh, treatment plan, uh, how we can reduce the treatment uh, time and how we can have a good treatment plan. Then we have to uh, make the setup for explaining to the patient why, why? Yes, because the image are more powerful than ours. The must be case when you see uh, this case, <coughs> you will ask me why we had to do uh, mark B for uh, this case, right? Mark B uh, ministerial, ministerial assistant rabbit palatal expansion. We had to do it. Why we have, we will see. Uh, she came to see me. Which chip complaint is the buccal corridor. So we can see the big buccal corridor here. <clears throat> and the important, uh, before she came, uh, she came to see me, she came to uh, another clinic and the dentist uh, said, we can do uh, the case only use braces, only use braces and the wire. Okay, so the, the patient uh, was believed with uh, the last dentist, so I had to show her this um, movement and explain why we had to do MACP. For the lower, we can see the lower, the posterior sector is tip to lingual side. So we can do control tipping, and of course, with control tipping, is uh, we can do easily, and uh, we can have the crowd talk after the of the lower posterior sector. It's good, but the crowd talk of the upper posterior sector is good now. So if we do control tipping, we cannot have a good occlusion because we tipping out, and we cannot have the. Um, <coughs> good occlusion with the <coughs> with this one so we have to do the translation movement with translation movement the teeth will out of the bone be you see we do the bit movement around four, three to four millimeter translation <coughs> so it's the reason why we have to do mark b uh, this uh, is been, uh, we explain uh, and the result after uh, uh, three weeks, the result after three weeks. And the result after one year, you can see <coughs> the crowd talk of the upper is okay. We tip uh, uh, labioli of the lower posterior sector and the occlusion now is still bad, uh, still, still good. <coughs> so then I had to show uh, so a little bone turn of the disturbance for her and we finish the case. The picture uh, before after the uh, expansion and the smile of the patient after expansion. Horrible, right? Yeah, the patient was very happy. So after that, uh, she uh, said, yeah, I want to uh, remove braces. It's okay, it's okay for me, but I don't. Uh, I did not do it for her. I uh, just said that we had to do some stripping and class two elastic for some uh, bone tone disturbance. <clears throat> After communication on a pluridisciplinary case with another dentist, almost for prosthodontic, we communication with uh, prosthodontist or uh, implantologist. <clears throat> First case, uh, another dentist sent uh, the case to me and said, please close the space, then Chen, uh, uh, bring back to her and uh, she will redo the two crowd. But I uh, don't understand what uh, she say. I had to do the simulation for show her. 
I show her sorry, but I uh, don't have each kind of uh, this patient because it's in the in my clinic. I am working in my home because of COVID, so I cannot have the um, uh, X-ray. <clears throat> so for the movement of the upper and uh, lower, we have to do the okay difficult movement around two to three millimeter translation of the lower incisor. Before doing it, I had to uh, always uh, take a CBCT. <clears throat> and uh, movement you can see is equivalent with the extraction case and maximum anchorage. This one we had to take time around two to three years and uh, provide and everything of the patient will, uh, will change a lot and uh, potential issue for relapse or the um, <clears throat> but you don't know. So I discussed with the patient, I show her the second option. The second option is just minimal movement and veneer because she had a um, small, small uh, lower incisor and small uh, lateral upper incisor. The veneer will be better for the aesthetic. The lower we can have the movement is more predictable. And we can compare, yes, 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 with the simulation, we can do it very fast, do it very fast and predictable with this movement. So this movement is not predictable. And uh, we had uh, a lot of potential issue after. <coughs> and uh, we had the third option for close the space and put a bridge on the implant and two veneer on the upper. But the patient don't want to have the uh, implant on the lower, so she chose the second option. The second option, this is the result after only four months with a liner. We align, we uh, also pay for the uh, veneer and we change to uh, prothodontist doing veneer for her. Yes, very good and fast treatment plan. Second case, the case uh, from Dr. Nicola Sales. <coughs> the prostodontist sent uh, uh, to uh, this case to the to Dr. Nicola and say uh, uh, the patient want to close the space. Okay, so we do the simulation and show him. The first option, we open this space for an implant on the anterior because the patient only had three incisors, three lower incisors. We open this space with a liner. It will be very predictable and we can hear no more over that. Alignment a little on the upper. <clears throat> the second option is the veneer. So forget it. <laughs> It's uh, too ugly with the, to the patient. But it's, even it very ugly, the patient said, okay, uh, I want to do, but I, uh, we explain to her, no, 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 it's ugly, no, no, don't do it. <coughs> and the patient and uh, gross autistic want to see the simulation, uh, how we can close the space. Yes, we can close the space, but it takes a long time and the patient will be will have horrible over that, like around 10 millimeter over that. <laughs> if patient want to do it, we can do it. It's just the moving the teeth. But I explained to uh, we explained to her it's not good. So so I don't know the patient uh, to uh, which option. <clears throat> the third case, the patient came to see uh, me and. Uh, want to close the space on the lower. <coughs> she lost number seven on the lower right. Uh, but she only want to do the lower, don't want to do the upper. She will do the upper only uh, veneer on uh, number two one. <coughs> she had protrusion, but she don't want to change her profile. Just care about the lower space. You can see 
<coughs> First option, she want to do a liner. I show her we can do easy with the liner. We push the teeth and open space for an implant on the anterior. So she will be here the fine incisor here, but it's not the trouble. She will have the good occlusion here. Yeah, we don't change the occlusion a lot, so she can have the, one more the good occlusion. <coughs> then, because she want I do the simulation of uh, closing the face, we had to um, retract and uprighting the lower molar around uh, seven millimeter, even with uh, braces with minstrel the movement is very difficult and take a long time, almost around three, two years. <clears throat> so I said the patient, we can do, but you have to take two years of the treatment. Uncomfortable, <clears throat> good minutes through, and the importance, we will not have the occlusion. The number seven is not in the occlusion. We will lose number seven. And the last, uh, the last case we said, so of course, we cannot choose this treatment plan. Why? Low, lost, lose time. Two years. For the first option, we only need around um, less than six months or six to eight months. For this one, we take around two years with many so with many braces, uncomfortable and Lost one the molar. <coughs> the last one we did the aligner lingual treatment diagnostic for uh, this one. For aligner, we do it for mechanic evaluation because the RT setup on aligner is not the same with the diagnostic setup. For the lingual, we are doing the way with in video. Uh, bending, so we had to have the from wire bending. We buy the wire bending on the paper on the scanner model, <coughs> like this case. Uh, she came to see us for the legal treatment. So I do the setup. <coughs> and um, the setup for wire bending. And uh, the setup show us we don't need to extract on the lower lab. We can do digitalization on the lower lab. When I see the patient, I see we had to do uh, extraction for upper and lower, but no, no. We don't need the extraction on the lower lab, this one. If we do uh, extraction here, we had to burn around 90% uh, of the anchorage. So, After four months, I align the upper with individual wire bending night time. <clears throat> the second case, the basin had minimal, um, minimal crowding on the upper and the lower head to head position. Plus three. So I want to do digitalization. I want to keep the position of the upper incisor and uh, sewn the edge to edge or anterior dot by, by retroply the lower incisor. We had to do uh, digitalization on the upper and the lower. So I do the uh, digitalization simulation. It's okay. We can do it with two buckle shell, mini shoe, uh, and class two elastic. We uh, digitalize only two to three millimeter. It's good we can do a little stripping. After wire bending and truly lingual braces. This is the result after 10 months with truly lingual braces and a liner. We only need 10 months for this patient. Lateral side before and after. So, the before and after of cephalometric, we keep the upper incisor position. Uh, I think I uh, retroline a little, not uh, keep in uh, this position. I retroline a little and uh, I retroline the lower incisor as uh, 
the setup okay the uh, super imposition i did it with the uh, website with uh, website.com <coughs> so the third case the lingo okay the, the singer came to see us after one year of the treatment with another dentist and uh, uh, almost nothing changed after she want to do the lingo treatment <coughs> and i had to do the um, setup for Anchorage, for seeing Anchorage. Why? Uh, uh, the crowd talk of the low upper incisor, did you see? Each great line already. So I want to keep this profile, this crowd talk and the position of the upper and the lower incisor. I had to see the Anchorage because the, another dentist is struck to Primola on the upper already. So the simulation, I keep the position on the upper and the lower. So we had the, the normal, almost the normal anchorage here. We can do it down with through. And the result with the 2D and the result after liner treatment, the lower. And for this patient, after doing the setup, I know I had to do stripping a lot for the primola on the left. So uh, she had the big bone tone discrepancy. Uh, as you know, number four is bigger than number five. If we extract number five on the lower left uh, in the first time, we will not to uh, we will need not we will not need to um, do stripping on the lower left. <coughs> So the last one, the liner case with the rock lineation on the upper, uh, lead, uh, spacing, a little crowding, and very uh, deep curve speed. So for this case, we had to do uh, direct intrusion uh, on the lower around four millimeter. <clears throat> and retroclide the upper incisor with stripping and with the spade. So you are after doing uh, diagnostic simulation, I will show you this is the active setup of the aligner. This is the setup of uh, number 10. Did you see we have open by, bit open by between the upper and lower because we had to do the compensation of the, the intrusion by uh, the aligner is not the same with uh, the picture. We take the picture and it's in the active setup. So the diagnostic is not the same with the active setup on the aligner. We have to see uh, it, how it's different. <coughs> we just do the diagnostic setup for seeing the movement and we will see the mechanic for the active setup. And the result after one year, after one year, we had, uh, we still have uh, a little class two, but I cannot do, um, continue to stripping here because the lower incisor is, uh, we did stripping on the lower incisor and now it's um, quite small. I cannot do it. The person happy. The before after and superimposition of the cephalometric. It's good. So I finished the indication for 3D simulation for normal case for <clears throat> unusual communication with the patient with another dentist and uh, for a liner legal treatment. After I will uh, show you. Uh, which are the case we cannot do the simulation. The first, we cannot see, uh, do the simulation for the case we want to move the mandible. mandible. We want to do uh, rotate clockwise or counterclockwise the mandible <clears throat> like in uh, open by case or in uh, deep by case. Uh, open by deep by skeletal, we want to move the uh, mandible or in functional case, we cannot do it. I will show you the clinical case. 
Like this one, open by Skenekoto case. Uh, this is an orthogonatic surgery case. We can do 3D simulation for orthogonatic surgery. But uh, for orthodontic simulation, we only can do how the teeth fit. Because for this patient, I want to intrude the upper molar and use mu for rotate the mandible counter clockwise for closing the, uh, the bite. So when we intrude the lower, uh, the upper uh, molar on the setup, we will have open bite on the uh, uh, posterior. It cannot, uh, cannot understand. So we just can uh, know how to do the fit <coughs> and the X-ray. Cephalometric and non -lasis. Then I uh, did mill intrusion of the upper molar, then I close the spine, but I cannot uh, meet this patient around two months. And uh, because of uh, COVID 19 in Vietnam. Then the second we cannot do is after the cross by with functional shift or we call it bursodoclastry. <coughs> Like that one, we had the functional shift, we had the mandible move forward, but it's not the real uh, position of the more mandible. It's just shift to the forward. We can have the real mandible position in uh, CR position. So uh, for this case, I sold the cross by first, then I uh, make the setup with precede and see we need the. Uh, Extraction or non extraction, or we just how see how the teeth fit. Like this one, if we uh, do the extraction uh, simulation first, or make a treatment plan uh, before we difficult for see how we can do non extraction or extraction. But I did the simul, I saw the cross by. So then we can see the cephalometric. The IMPA is okay, so I don't need to do extraction on this guy. I just do simulation for seeing how the teeth fit. And this guy also, this guy is uh, the case uh, communicate case with uh, prothodontist. And I shown the cross by. After solving the cross by, I do the simulation uh, and uh, discuss uh, had a discussion with the prothodontist and see how we can open space, how we can uh, have good uh, aesthetic because she lost one central incisor. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, the last one, the last one, the, first, the last part, I want to conclusion about everything I say. Rigito simulation, for me, it's the best way for diagnostic and orthodontic treatment plan. It makes me more confident, less time on the chair, uh, reduce the treatment time. We can understand clearly of our treatment plan, uh, extract or non extraction, or uh, we have to stripping on which teeth and how many uh, millimeter we have to uh, do stripping. And I always had a job uh, sentence to uh, my friend. One hour on the computer sometimes help us, say one year, two year, three year on the chair. And the person will very happy with us. And all of their family will come us for dental treatment. <laughs> uh, when the patient see the result, They see the result and they increase their trust. Trust me, trust them, uh, trust us, trust about our treatment plan. But it takes time. Despite of we only need around 10 to uh, 15 minutes for one simulation. And so total is around less than one hour. But the time for dentists is very useful. So never do it for free. If you do it for free, you have to do for on the case. It's free, so the patient want to do it. We have to have the opposite before doing it. Never do it for free. Okay.
thank you. Uh, this is everything about uh, uh, my presentation. Uh, hope it can be useful for you. And if you have any question, please uh, put on the chat box and I will uh, 